Britain are some of the most congested roads in Europe. And as the emergency service is on two wheels that can scythe through the traffic and get vital help where it's most needed, fast. Police and paramedic bikers across the country race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up, a toddler's in agony. A charm assault on biker cop Lucy Watson. She's a very good woman. I want the same mother. <laughs> and a woman's fighting to breathe. <laughs> Birmingham, four o'clock on a busy Thursday afternoon. An emergency call's coming in. Responding, biker paramedic Steve Harris. Trouble nine call to one of the hotels on Broad Street. Uh, the jury's in. On his Yamaha FCR 1300, Steve can sprint across town quicker than an ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras, so we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. The hotel's just over a mile away from the city centre. Although the traffic is heavy, Steve's on scene in just over three minutes. Two police officers are there to meet him. They've got a few details about the patient, including his name, Ray. Well, he's an agency. Uh, an agency staff, so I don't really know a lot about him. <laughs> Apparently, he was just standing there talking, come back from lunch. His eyes flickered and he just, he just went out to stand off. Yeah. You've been breathing all right, too. Hello. Has no, he been no. like this all the time you've been with him? One hour partially open in case Has he spoken to you? Yeah. Ray. Hello. With so little to go on, Ray. the cause of Ray's collapse is a mystery, on, but he appears to be having spasms. Come on, Ray. I need you to talk to me. Steve must work through a checklist to find out what's wrong. Little sharp scratch on your, your finger, Ray. Steve needs to check Ray's blood sugar. Levels too high or too low could both cause a collapse and convulsions. Normal blood sugar levels are six or seven. Below four is dangerously low, meaning Ray is suffering a hypo or hypoglycemic attack. The situation's critical. A reading of 0.6 means Ray's blood sugar is life-threateningly low. Hello. I've just... A, well, the first one was 0.6. Uh, we have no history as such. Uh, he's an agency worker for, for the hotel. The crew check to see if Ray has anything on him confirming that he's a diabetic. No. There's nothing else we've looked. There are over two and a half nothing million else. diagnosed diabetics in the UK. Wallet. Untreated or uncontrolled, so it damages nerves, circulation, yeah. eyesight and kidneys. One in ten adult deaths is a direct result of diabetes. Possibly. Steve needs to bring Ray's blood sugar up. A hypoglycemic coma can lead to permanent or fatal brain damage. He injects him with glucagon to stimulate the liver to release glucose. Both Steve and the ambulance crew battle to cannulate Ray with an intravenous line to give him more drugs if necessary. Heart rate 84, sets were 86. The glucagon acts extremely quickly and Ray starts to come round almost Hello immediately. There. Hi Ray, you're at the hotel, jury's in. You're diabetic. Yeah, you've had a hypo. Your sugars are very, very low. Ray, I've got some hyper stop here. All right, what I want you to do is pop some in your mouth and swallow it for me. Here we go. The gel contains a strong dextrose solution to bring Ray's blood Swallow sugar level up. There's a... Hang on, Ray. Let's, let's give you a hand. Let's Good just time. help you. Ray, what we'd like to do, get you off the floor, pop you in the ambulance, do some checks. We're not going to take you away, OK? But we just need to make sure that you're all OK. Here you go. That's it. Yeah, you come and sit here, Ray. Just working. Just it's a talking point, isn't it? Don't forget. And how are you feeling now? Just a little bit low. Yeah. What would your normal sugar be? Oh, it's usually about similar eyes. Okay. What would you consider low? 
aiming below four. Ooh, telling So 0.7 is, yeah. But the first one I did was 0.6, and I couldn't believe it, so I did another one, and that was 0.7. Right, that's, it's as low as I've ever seen. I mean, we see ones and one point, you know, but it's not very often we get them under one, is it? Yeah. So, have you eaten? I had very little, really, but I, hmm? I had hardly any insulin. Hmm? That's fine. Do you have problems? I mean, is yeah, it yeah. normally well controlled? Yeah. Yeah. Well controlled. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, that is yeah. Thirty-two years. Right. Yeah. Steve's been a paramedic for 33 years, and this is still unusual. That's about as low as I've ever seen. I think I've had one uh, patient who once who presented at 0.3, uh, but 0.6 is very, very low. I think he's going to be fine. Uh, he's now fully recovered. Um, he had an injection off me of glucagon. He's also had some uh, glucogel, which is uh, a glucose-based gel. Uh, he's now decided he doesn't wish to go to hospital and he's gone into the hotel to go and have something to eat. Uh, that's what he needs now, he needs a meal, he needs some carbohydrates, uh, bread, potato, pasta, something like that to uh, build his stores of glucose back up. Still to come, a teenager collapsed in the street and a driver tries to talk his way out of trouble. She's beautiful so I want to keep her. <laughs> Birmingham, mid-afternoon. The biker paramedics are holed up waiting for a job, but as usual, they're not sitting down for long. On duty, paramedic Mark Hayes. The incident's just a few hundred yards down the road. Mark's there in seconds. We've got a female collapsed on Corporation Street, opposite House of Fraser. What's happened? She just went for the seat, she just fell on the floor. With a bang? No, 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 she Gently. just went a fight, yeah, she just... Okay, like control. Started. Okay, what's your name? Tasha. Okay, tell me what happened. You don't know. Do you know where you are at the moment? No? How old are you? 15. Okay. What we're going to do, Tasha, is going to do some checks on you. All right. So you were sat down at the bus stop. What happened? You don't know. You can't remember anything. Do you remember sitting at the bus stop? I was standing next to you. Okay. And then what do you remember? I just remember. Any pains anywhere at all? No? Are you on your period at all at the moment? No? She's taking a regular tablet. Yeah. What do you take? Yeah, it's just a tire. What's that for? Okay, all right. What we're going to do is a few checks on you. All right, we're going to blanket over you, get you warm. All right. Crohn's disease is an autoimmune illness where the body's defense system attacks the intestines, I'm going to take causing some inflammation, blood from the end of extreme right. pain, just and often that. diarrhea. And did you feel okay at school? Okay, in what way did you not feel okay? Dizzy. Your blood sugar's fine, oxygen saturation's fine, your pulse is fine. Have you had any problems, you had any flares, flare ups with your Crohn's disease at all? Diarrhea. You had that today? Yeah. Uh, how many days? About a, week. About a week. Okay. When you normally have prolonged episodes of, of, of your diarrhea and that, do you, do you have to get in touch with your GP or have you got a specialist or? Okay, when did you last see that specialist? February. February. And what's the long term plan for your Crohn's? Just new medication. And see how it goes. Yeah. When your Crohn's flares up, how long does it normally last? Three months. And did you end up having to go to hospital for that? Okay. And when, you, when you're having diarrhea, is there any blood or anything in it? Yeah. Has it been today? And. What have you eaten today? You've had nothing at all? Right. Obviously, it's really important, one, that even if you're fit and well, that you have substantial food and fluid intake, 
more so if you're having diarrhea yeah you can become dehydrated your electrolytes become low I'm sure the reason you collapse is due to the fact that it's your poor food and fluid intake uh, combined with your Crohn's. The risk that you've got is dehydration and you have a drop in electrolyte levels and you start to become, uh, you can have dizziness, you can feel lethargic, etc. Um, and uh, not topping up those fluid levels and, and taking in food, um, you know, can cause a collapse basically. Uh, which uh, I think is the case today. Natasha will be taken to hospital to be treated for dehydration, but there's no cure for Crohn's disease. One, two, three. The best just doctors sit up, can don't do, do is manage else. the symptoms. Just sit up. We'll just stay like that. Treatment what we need of the to do condition is, is done with steroids and immunosuppressants. Right. Now you've sat up, how do you feel? You feel dizzy. Severity right, and regularity of flare-ups varies. Right. But most You're Crohn's okay. sufferers will experience several bouts of illness per One, year. One, two, three, up we come. And straight back. Bed's behind you. Keep, Keep your breathing Keep slow. Darling, nice. Sit yourself down. Nice. Swing your legs up. You. Keep your breathing nice and slow. 80% will there require surgery at some point to deal with complications such as ulcers. Natasha, they'll look after your eyes. Okay, take care. It's a quiet night on the A13. On patrol, Essex's only female biker cop, PC Lucy Watson. As Lucy scouts the dual carriageway, sitting high up on her BMW R1200RT, something catches her eye on the opposite side. There's a stationary vehicle with no lights on sitting in lane one. It's in an extremely dangerous position, with cars passing at 70 miles an hour. If one doesn't see it until it's too late, there could be disastrous consequences. Lucy needs to get it off the road. It's a broken down quad bike, and it's had a very lucky escape. Quad bikes are perfectly legal on dual carriageways and even motorways. But just like cars, they must be fully taxed, MOT'd and insured. Bit of a workout for you? Yeah, I just get it stuck for some reason. And now I need to call to my friends to come and call it. Okay, is it yours? Yeah, I just bought it right now. I just want to take it home. Okay, and what's your name? Okay. Quad bikes like this can cost thousands of pounds. And it's only had it a few hours. You got your um, driving license on you? No. Have you I got didn't... one? Yeah, I, I just sent it to DVLA, so I'm just waiting to come back. Is it a UK license? Yes. Okay. How is the vehicle insured? Insured? It's not insured yet. You know you need insurance to ride this, don't you? Uh, I was I was just to take it home and insure it oh. tomorrow. doesn't work like that, though, does it? You have to have insurance to be on the road. That. I didn't know that. Now I know it because you just told me that. Unfortunately, I ignorance of the law is not a defence. Yeah, okay. They're going to be dealt with today for using a motor vehicle without insurance. And we're seizing it under section 165 of the Road Traffic Act. So we're going to take it away on a recovery truck. So if you've got any friends who could come and pick you up, that might save you a long walk home. Do you have any identification with you? Yes, I do. Thank you. Tango 53, BJ. Could you arrange me a 165 recovery for a quad bike, please? Thank you. Nice quad, I just bought it right now. <laughs> and get me in the trouble straight away. Your hair was a different colour. Oh yeah, that's when I tried to looks good for the woman. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> so what was the problem? The fact that you were broken down. Yeah. You had no lights and you were in lane one of the A13. You're in a very, very dangerous position. Yeah, which that, is why I just came... to pull it off. Yeah, that's fine, but that's why I came to see you. Yeah, that's thank we you stopped much. the traffic on the A13 for you to get let you get off in safety. Okay? That's that's why thank I came you. to see you. Unfortunately for you, you're not insured. Yeah, I will get insurance tomorrow anyway. Right. Well when you've got insurance you can get it back. You have to pay £150 for the recovery and £20 for if we don't store it. 
you have 14 days to get the bike back. If you don't get it back within the 14 days, it will be disposed of. I can get it back this week, yeah? Yeah. Because I need to work. If you can produce a certificate of insurance and a driving license, you can get it and back yeah, tomorrow. Bring it to me, to the, my home address, or I have to No, you have to come and get it. If you could just sign that there for me, please. Thank you. You've been reported for the offence of no insurance. Yeah. Yeah? To deal with that, you have to go to court. Do you understand what a court is? Yeah, I don't understand. And see the magistrates? Yeah. And they will deal with you for that offence. Takes a call from yeah, a friend who's coming I, to pick I him up. I want you to come to... Okay, okay, see you. Okay, okay. She's beautiful, so I want to keep her here anyway. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs> You're very happy I... for someone who's just lost their bike. <laughs> no, I'm not. What can I do? <laughs> not a lot, really, can you? Meanwhile, the recovery truck has arrived. I think if they spent the money buying it, you'd spend the money insuring it. Just drive half an hour and, and I got full straight out. To be fair, you drove for half an hour and you broke down. Yeah, that was. <laughs> That's another issue. Yeah. She's a very good woman. I want the same mother. She's really a good woman. Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> no, 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 you're not that old. <laughs> but you still be my mum. <laughs> bye bye, Zoe. Yeah. Stay safe. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah, okay, bye. Bye, woman. He's quite funny, wasn't he? <laughs> I think he took it very well, considering. Went to court and pleaded oh, guilty. Oh, and was fined £250 <laughs> and given yeah, six points yeah. on his license for driving without insurance. <laughs> Oxford, in the centre of southern England, home to the famous university and the South Central Ambulance Service biker paramedics. At the biker's standby point, paramedic Eddie Webb is receiving a 999 call. 16-year-old lady with breathing difficulties. These could be the symptoms of a heart attack or serious lung problems. Eddie needs to get there fast. Do here, are we? Hello there, what's happened? But what Eddie finds when he arrives is a woman not having a heart attack, but struggling to catch her breath. So what do we call you? Charmaine. Charmaine. So what's, can you tell me what's happened? I just can't breathe. Have you got asthma or anything like that at all? No. Can I just pop you, get a finger in there for me? Okay. Just relax, just pop your hand down there. She was like this last night at six o'clock. Right. To sleep and then it was... Should I let this morning go on? So it's come and gone today? It has come and gone. All right. On, on any medication or anything? I've got high pressure. Sorry. Right, your oxygen levels are actually very good. So, you know, I'm not immediately concerned about your oxygen levels. But what, what we'll do is we'll just give you some oxygen just now. Pop this over your, over your glasses. That's it. And just breathe away normally on it. Nice and gentle. Long, slow breaths. Just have a quick listen to your chest. <gasps> nice and gently now. Okay, your chest actually sounds quite clear. You've got a little bit of a wheeze there. Let's see if we can get you to catch your breath. Just try and control your breathing, Charmaine. Just try and nice, long, deep breaths. That's it's not it. immediately clear what's wrong. But Eddie knows that he has to calm Charmaine down to get her in control of her breathing. That's it, just concentrate on it. It hurts in your ribs as well, does it? Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Just think about lying on a nice Caribbean beach somewhere, nice and relaxed. Oh, yes. Yeah, and he's gone off to get the drinks. There's an ambulance on its way, and what we'll do is we'll get them just to check you out. No, we'll just get them to check you out uh, and do like an ECG and stuff. Concentrate on slowing your breathing down. That's it. Let's just pop that off for a second. Just keep that on there. Nice deep breaths. Just relax. Slow it down again, come on. Speeding up again. 
can't. Yeah, no, you definitely can't. Trust me, you can. Just do it. That's it. Concentrate really hard and let this, your breathing slow down. That's it. This is Charmaine. Um, been hyperventilating since before we came. Sats are uh, sort of 100%, 98%. Hyperventilating isn't just caused by panicking. Okay, I'm just gonna pop these there are on chemical the changes ankles. within the body which add to the problem. As you breathe more and more, so the blood has more oxygen much. and less carbon dioxide, making it more acidic and causing blood vessels to tighten. It's this tightening which gives the sufferer tingling, vision problems and faintness. The excessive breathing has to be stopped, either by conscious breathing exercises on the part of the sufferer or by a more technical technique. Okay. There's been a real medical breakthrough recently, a real scientific breakthrough, that if you get fast breathing like this, what you need to do is breathe in a brown paper bag. Yeah? That's the scientific breakthrough. And what we need to do is, because you're breathing so quickly, you've knocked your oxygen carbon dioxide levels out. And what, yeah, that's all it is. And what we need to do is get your carbon dioxide levels back up. So you just breathe into a bag. This is what you're doing with this, is you're breathing back in some of your expelled air. And it'll just naturally bring you back. Let me pop this off again. Not a problem. I'm so sorry. Well, I'll let you in a little secret. I'd much rather come here than some other places that we go to, so. <laughs> I'll leave that mask, that might help if you've not got a brown paper bag, but just re-breathe um, your normal um, breath. Okay, doc, we'll leave you to it then. All right. Thank you. Enjoy your supper tonight. All right. This lady, I initially thought she was having some sort of asthma attack, but it soon became apparent that she was having a bit of a panic attack and she was hyperventilating. To reverse it, all you need to do is breathe in carbon dioxide. Um, normally it's a brown paper bag, but these uh, oxygen rebreather masks without any oxygen going into them seems to do the trick as well. And just try to get people to calm down, concentrate on the breathing, slow it down, have nice happy fluffy thoughts, tends to sort of work. Um, and as you saw by the end she'd calmed down quite a bit and her wheeze had disappeared and all her pains had disappeared and she was magically cured. <laughs> Still to come, biker paramedic Steve Harris is called to an injured toddler. And when tints spell trouble. We use a device called a tint meter just to determine what the level of naughtiness is effectively. Mid-morning in Birmingham, a 999 calls coming in to the city's biker paramedics. A two-year-old child's in trouble. The calls to Hansworth, nearly two and a half miles away. The journey takes Steve just four minutes. The child's in this dental practice with his mum. Steve can hear his screams from the pavement. <laughs> The young boy has fallen over, hitting his head on a sharp corner, leaving a deep wound. Instead of holding him as you are, just try, try and sit him up normal. That's it. That's it. Hello. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he was jumping on this side, he'd fallen and he'd, he'd hit his head on there. Right, what's the wound like? It's a very deep stand of the bone. So Come and look after baby, okay? Here we go. Oh, Mum, I'm so sorry. Alright, you don't want to see this. No, okay. Close your eyes. Oh, yeah. The boy has had a nasty blow go. to the head. There's a risk he may have injuries to the brain. Here What we need to do is try and make him relax. Right. But the way he is, because he's fighting and kicking and... Yeah. He's been getting very, very hot, and I'd prefer to have these off. Let's make him a little more comfortable. That's it. Here yeah, are he's ever so hot, Enter. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.
Shush, 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 shush. He's normally fit and well. Yeah. He doesn't take tablets or medicines or anything like that. Okay. When he fell, he, he was awake all the time. He hasn't been sick. No. No. you. And what's his name? Oh, I was just having my teeth um, done yeah. and he was he sitting was on, on the, the chair, chair and maybe he fell off and smashed his head on the yeah. chair there. Very odd smash. He's calmed down a lot. He, he couldn't keep that up all the time, could you? It looked exhausting the way he was fighting and chanting and screaming. All right. This is our little one. Uh, In young children, was, was diagnosis is made more difficult the by their inability uh, to communicate properly. Steve wants to get this chair. young boy to hospital yeah. as Behaving fast as possible to be thoroughly checked over for any serious problems. Fell off the chair. Just under there, above the bridge of his nose, there's a wound about, about a finger now. Uh, very deep, it's down to the bone. This is as quiet as he's been. Yeah. Think yourself lucky you weren't here to 15 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> I think he's exhausted himself. We had uh, a few problems at first. He wasn't very happy. Thank you. Right, yeah. there's an ambulance outside. Okay. If we Thank pop you. him out there. Do you have any other bags? No, no, no. The wound, it's not particularly large, but it's very deep. It's gone down to the skull bone. I, I would imagine in the first instance it would have bled quite profusely, but obviously by the time I turned up, the bleeding had stopped. All the best. Yeah, I'm, sure that, I'm sure he's going to be fine, yeah. honestly. You know, it's, Treating uh, children brings its difficulties, but yeah. Steve's a granddad and yeah, takes no. it in his stride. Dealing with children, especially young children, can be very rewarding. You know, eventually the child calmed down, and by the time the ambulance turned up, you know, he's, he's calm, he's, he's quiet, uh, he's still awake, he doesn't appear to be in any discomfort. And, you know, from what he was when I first went in to what he was when I handed him over to the ambulance, there's a huge difference and that's rewarding in itself. Working 12-hour shifts and facing up to 20 calls a day, it's important Mark and Steve keep their strength up. Today, Birmingham's International Food Market provides an opportunity for some much-needed sustenance. Just looking. We're grazing at the moment. What we do, we wander around, well, I wander around the market, looking for all the, the free tastes and that. And if it's a big enough market, you can, you can make a meal out of it. You know, you don't have to buy anything. It's a money-saving tip. Is it because you're too tight? No, it's, you know... Nice cheese. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I shouldn't really, should I? Thank you. Spotted the bread now. There we go. It's going in for the kill. <laughs> the cherries are lovely. That looks good, doesn't it? We're just going to be eating all afternoon, aren't we? We're coming up to the soap store. I want to see him try this. <laughs> Come on. What? I'll see you try this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? One of them for the wife. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. You all right? Are you ready for the heart attack? Where is your colleague? <laughs> He's eating a greasy sandwich. Thank you. Can you imagine to your chocolate? Thank you. I wasn't sure that the heart attack reference was to the chocolate or the price. <laughs> Lunchtime, Essex Biker Police HQ. Reporting for duty, PC Ray Jeffrey. One last swig of tea. Might be the last one of the day. Mm. You can't beat a nice cup of tea before you go playing, can you? <clears throat> See you guys. Today. Ray will be patrolling the area around Benfleet, in the south of the county, near Canvey Island. Parked on the side road, sitting high up on his bike, he can see right into passing vehicles. Straight away, something catches his eye. Hello, Mike. 
if you follow me, yeah. I'll take you over to the other side of the roundabout. Just follow oh. me, okay. There's a trend on the road for tinted windows, but many people are caught out making the front windows darker than they should be. Uh, as you can see from the um, tint on the drivers and passengers doors, it's ever so dark, which is going to be unlawful. Uh, we use a device called a tint meter just to determine what the level of naughtiness is effectively and then deal with him appropriately. Um, yeah, it's quite obvious to me that the tint is too dark oh, okay. and a colleague will just do a, a measurement of that. He's probably explained that already. Oh, okay, yeah, he's definitely already, yeah. You're not wanted for murder or anything yeah. properly naughty no, then? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, good. Ray's colleague, PC Winfield, uses a monitor yeah. to check the tints. I say, from here backwards, the way round to the beef fillet is legal. Right, that's got to say 70 or more. It's 29.0. That's how much light's getting through there. And as I say, it should be 70 or more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what you've got here, yeah. Is there was a mark in there that says AS2. Yeah. AS2 means that glass has actually been manufactured with a tint in the glass. Oh, okay. So therefore, when you start sticking tints onto the glass, yeah. that's been, it will make it lower than it should be. Tints on side windows should allow in 70% of the light. These windows are blocking 70%. This will drastically reduce the driver's vision, especially at night leaving him less likely to be able to see other road users. The windscreen, yeah. that'll have a mark in That's AS1. Yeah. Well, AS1 yeah. means it has got a tint in it. Uh -oh. That's got to be 75 or more. That's reading 80.4, yeah. which means it's got about a 20% tint in the glass, which means it's legal. You are going to be asked to remove the film today as well before you continue your journey. Not today, I can't... Uh, well, that's, that's a supervisor. <laughs> I got it wrong today. Uh, the trouble is, now that we've ascertained that it's unlawful, no, we can't let you drive it. We can't let you drive it in that situation. What, what the colleague will do is issue with a prohibition notice, and it's a matter for him whether he defers that prohibition and instructs you to drive home with the window down. He can take your vehicle off the road. It's lawfully entitled to do that, all right? Ray and PC Winfield decide to try and remove the tins at the roadside. I ever stuck this on. Did a good job. Right, well, it's just starting that off for you. It's a fixed penalty ticket. It's fixed at £30. It'll become £45 if you don't pay it within 28 <laughs> days, all right? You can see the difference between the tent and the normal glass. Oh, it's actually a very good job, is it? Whoever stuck this on did a very good job. What will happen is your details will go on our database anyway, yeah. so we know that you've had one already. So it will be highlights. It's not good £30. It's a big money. You like first time is warning. All right. I can't do it then, I respect your words, but the 30 pound... It's one. much more expensive though if we prohibit the use of the I never car. heard the news or anything like the intended... It's not on the news, uh, it's not on the news, it is, no it's, law it's just traffic it. law. I yeah. follow the law, but I don't... But know. ignorance isn't a defence, you've got to the know these pound. things. Um, if we were to take it off the road, you've then got to get a recovery truck to take it home. You imagine how much that costs. Oh. <laughs> what we're going to ask you to do is put it down. Taking the car off the road would mean the driver would have to pay for a recovery vehicle, potentially costing hundreds of pounds. All right, we're going to trust you. Well, you trust me. I, yeah. don't, I, I, I never heard it before. That's why you do that. Have because... you got an honest face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got an honest face? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's all right. We'll trust you to get those removed as soon as possible. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I got yeah, tomorrow, but... tinted windows is a problem that dogs Essex police. It's particularly common among young drivers. <laughs> Early afternoon in Birmingham. Most of the city's hard at work. But for biker paramedic Steve Harris, an emergency call's coming in. Trouble nine call to Digworth Coach Station. I believe there's someone had a fall. What's your name? Jean. Hello, Jean. I'm Steve. You all right? Right. That needs to be looked at properly, yes. which means I'm a trip down the hospital. What? Uh, right. Yes, I'm afraid so. Don't need to go to hospital. I think you do. I'm off to Nottingham. My daughter's missing it. I'm going to stay here. Well, I think your daughter would be worried about you, wouldn't well, she? She would be. <laughs> right. What are we going to do? Pop a dressing on that. Is it particularly sore? I think so. 
because of the type of wound it is and the fact that the, the way that your skin's gone, it needs to be dressed properly. All right. The problem will be because your circulation isn't as good as it used yeah. to be. Uh, right. What we don't want to happen is for that to turn into an ulcer. So it does need dressing. It needs closing up properly. We can't ignore that, and no. you know I wouldn't be happy for you to continue your journey. Most things happen at sea. Right, you say you didn't bang your head? No. So as you, were you coming on or getting no, off? No. So you haven't fallen over? No. And what do you normally suffer with? Like me. Uh, do you have any medical problems? Uh, well, not, not only the normal ones. <laughs> What's normal? You tell me. Well, what? my arthritis. Arthritis? Do you have any heart problems? No. Are you diabetic? No. Okay. All we're going to do at the moment is just move you off the coach to let that carry on its journey. 214, just to confirm, ambulance will be required, a leg injury. I arrived at the bus and tried to get on the, up the steps and um, I got one leg up and then I couldn't get the knee bridge to get the other one or went backwards and hit my leg on the bottom stair. So I'm going to the hospital. So I'm anxious about my daughter who's waiting for me at the coach station. Right. Wait on your good one. Keep your feet. Gene is 83 off years old. Off As floor. people get older, sure coordination and strength it's begin okay. to fail. Right Falls are common, and NHS statistics show Thank that you. over 30% of over 65 will have at least one there. serious fall Everybody every year. Watching her. We'll pop that down there, and we're just waiting for the ambulance. The problem is with any elderly, male or female, obviously the circulation begins to suffer in the extremities. The skin goes very thin, very tissuey, and rips and tears very easily. This is quite a, an extensive wound. It's not particularly deep, but we need that to be dressed properly and looked after, uh, you know, to minimise the risk of it uh, ulcerating later on. Jean? The coach driver, when he gets in at Nottingham, will f try and find her and let her know what's happened. Yes. Okay? All right. All the best. Still to come, Steve Harris is called to the back of a bus. Come on, mate. And the joys of biking. It's better than a massage and you have to pay for it. <laughs>
uh, is collapsed on the, the seat of a bus. He doesn't know whether he's drunk, diabetic, epileptic or heart attack or anything. So the treble nine call is made and then we have to come along and just make an assessment. And they say in this particular case, he's intoxicated. Once he's woken up, he's okay and uh, he can go on his way. See ya. All right, bye bye. Steve's first patient of the day didn't need any treatment, but every week over 20,000 people are admitted to hospital with alcohol-related problems. The cost to the ambulance service and A&E departments alone is estimated at over a billion pounds a year. <coughs> North Yorkshire, a quiet midweek lunchtime. On duty, Biker Cop PC Martin Smith. Today, Martin's on patrol on the outskirts of Tancaster. He's travelling along a quiet A road when he spots a small motorbike. Most small capacity motorbikes are ridden by learners and must carry L plates. This bike has no plates, so Martin decides to check it out. In the UK, over 5 million motorbike license and every year over a hundred thousand new riders take their test but will this biker's paperwork check out hiya it's all right it's difficult to see you when i was coming past but i was looking at small capacity motorcycle no l plates but this man might not be the rookie Smithy was expecting. No, all it was, was you're on a small capacity motorcycle. All right, yeah. And there's no L plates on it. Now, right. obviously, it may be possibly looking at you, you've got a motorcycle license. So what I'll do is yeah. I'll just get a few details, yeah. run and check on your driving license, which yeah. I'm looking at you, I think probably you'll be all right, and I'll let you get on your way. Yeah. All right. It might shock you how long I've had my license. Right, it is? Yeah. We've got a small capacity motorcycle, just at a glance, it's likely to be 125cc or less. Typically ridden by learners. The most obvious thing to me is there's no L plates on it. I might as well just check to make sure he does have a full category name, doesn't like it doesn't need the L plates, that's all. Oh, have you got it with you? Yeah. Oh brilliant. Blow my neck. That's gonna make you 70. Oh god, my mask about 77 off the top of my head. Very good. I have a license too, so I was. I think I've got it. I think you could get it when you were 15 when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> and I got one then. Well, it's keeping you healthy because I don't care what anybody says. If you're sitting on that while you're riding along, you're wriggling all the time. Oh, too, too, yeah. It keeps yeah, you fitter yeah. than sitting in the car. It's my little world. God, oh. <laughs> it's my little world. I must admit, I used to work at Settle yeah, and Skipton. Yeah. Um, I had a bike of my own, man. And I must admit, on an evening, one of the nicest things was if you've gone to Skipton or you're going home from work, was to take the back road and go up through places like Ayrton, Mallon. Uh -huh, because yeah. you know as the sun's going down, the temperature's dropping. Yeah. You get all the smells. And like you say, you're in your own little world. It's peace and quiet. It's better than a massage and you have to pay for one then. I'll just get your number plate yeah. off the back there. Right, well, I'll give you that back, Mr. Frank. Right, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. All right. I'll wish you many more years of yeah, happiness. Yeah, yeah, well... Uh... I was going to say, you certainly keep fitting healthy. Thank you. And you, you take care. See you later. Bye-bye now. Bye. Very pleasant. It's nice to see them that age, riding motorbikes and being happy and healthy. That'll be me in another... Well, I can't tell you, can I? <laughs> I think he's Tremaine's a wound was glued and patched, yeah, and he's now better. Well, the Natasha three. recovered after her fall, but her Crohn's disease continues to be a problem. Charmaine's hyperventilation was the result of severe hay fever, and with new medication, it's now under control. Ray made a quick recovery after some food. His diabetes has been under control since. And Jean's leg healed well. She's now fit and healthy again.